Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Trey Lance, preseason, week two, 2023. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. If you dig the channel, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you want even more Quarterback School content, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community. I appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Trey Lance preseason week two, 2023. Right out the gate here in this video, we're going to go interception, screen, tip ball. Now, for some reason, preseason 2023 is the year of the screen good bad or an indifferent right here this is on trey lance in my opinion he's the quarterback has got to have the capacity to get the ball up and down to the backfield screen runner now i feel like i talk a lot about this on this channel specifically the last few weeks what i'm talking about is that you have to be able to neg negotiate the first line of defense when we're throwing a backfield screens so right here Along the defensive line, we've got to be able to throw this screen to the backfield. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. But we have to be able to get this thing up and over to the screen. Now, that can be a few different things. That can be, hey, I want to go low and around it. That can be, hey, I'm going to bail and get a different angle. Or it can be, I'm going to throw a hand grenade up and over that front line, which is obviously moving forward towards you. So you've got to be able to get it up and over and around. If anybody in the defensive line or the rush unit tips the ball in most offenses, that is on the quarterback. Now I will say that the technique up front can make this easier on the quarterback. I'm most used to calling this a slingshot technique by the tackles. You want a short set and then push your guy by. But when the right guard steps on you and it gets a little muddy, now your guy kind of is in the lane. So again, slingshot technique for me, and this is not O-line school, nor do I want it to be, no offense, although I do love the big guys up front. What you're normally going to do on any sort of backfield screen is short set, meaning take a tight, not wide drop. You want to invite that rush wide so that you can then take, essentially, I used to teach it too, kick, kick, whatever you want to do is your terminology, drive, and then put your inside hand, on their rib cage or back and slingshot them by so that then the back can kind of get up and exit out underneath you. Now, sometimes the back will jump around. So that's usually the technique that I'm talking about. And then you want to lose with dignity on the interior and get out. So tough right there. You, you see him try to get by 78, try to get him and push him by. It's tougher when he's lined up inside. It's also a nice job playing the ball, but man, for us and Trey Lance evaluation, the touch here, you have to be able to throw it and get it up over. It just needs more touch. You can't be shocked that the guy puts up, puts his hands up. I mean, he's playing defense. Damn. Next one here. This one had me literally laughing by myself with the one person route and the nine person protection. Very game planny. A little middle finger e. Also to the quarterback, in my opinion here, saying uh, you're going to throw it to the guy that I want you to throw it to. Now, it helps to catch it. It helps to come back to this ball at the very top. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know how you don't chuckle at this, to be honest with you. One person route, whether this is a true kind of deep curl or dig or what a lot of teams run, which is kind of like that post read where you post if you want or if you get quarters. If you don't, you kind of do this. I will say at the top of this route, I would love to see this guy drive back to the quarterback as opposed to kind of put the landing gear down. That just means hands down, kind of slow turn, and then potentially, you know, is there some contact at the top of this thing? Is there a little jersey pull? Whatever. But, man, we are blocking this up, right? Wing, both in. We've got two backs coming downhill. Now they get out into the check down, but this is essentially nine-person pass pro. You just don't see nine-person pass pro in the preseason damn near ever. Ever, 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 ever drop. Damn. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, I think he throws with a little anticipation here. This is improvement, in my opinion. Can't catch it for him. Once you go to throw this thing, you know, maybe a little 
clicky as far as a great base at the very top. Just stay there. Comes together. Now, he separates right there. The wide receiver at the top is not out of the break. That's the anticipation. Now, it might be lowercase a because he's kind of leaning back into it. But, y'all, that's improvement. That's anticipation. Now, do you have to do it with only one person running around? Maybe. Baby steps. Or maybe he's just getting two middle fingers from the sideline. Regardless, catch the damn ball. Next one here. Another example of how you get quarterbacks hurt under center. Seven-step drop. Now, this should be a touchdown. But because of the pass protection, two spots, and really between four people, we have a quarterback getting hit. I dislike seven-step from under center. That's just the 2004 me. Okay, I'm still recovering. And we can acknowledge the fact that he can't do it by himself. Okay, so the first part here is what's going on scheme-wise. Well, where the ball ends up going on what I'm going to call a corner, and it looks like it's paired concept-wise here with what almost looks like a post under. Normally when there are two routes like this, you're trying to get the ball to the underneath one. This almost operates as like a clear out. But it's so open here because of whatever they're doing scheme-wise here that this becomes a really good throw. And I think it's a nice job from Trey Lance seeing it because I don't think it's designed to go there. So that part from Trey Lance is outstanding. The seven-step drop from under center, it's not for me, okay? It's the nicest way I can say it. This version of football, great. Now, no bueno. Now, the pass pro element of it is bad, y'all. Okay, so the first part here is when you go from an, when you let's pretend you're playing left tackle. You got an open edge. Well, now we shift over here. So now there's someone else here that, you know, if you're really, really locked in and it's a, you know, you're game planning, you know this play is coming, it's a shot, maybe you're feeling good. But in normal football, the shift makes it harder on the left tackle. Now, whatever the hell this is, okay, this is not good enough. I'm assuming that this is supposed to be a chip and then out into a check down as opposed to a he staying into pass block. Because if he's staying into pass block, his feet work, his footwork is terrible. Is terrible. In reality, all that really happens here is it's so bad that it go, makes gives him a straight shot to the quarterback who's doing a seven-step drop, which we've already talked about, is not my favorite. Now, the other part about this, and I don't know what the hell's going on with the pass pro and the running back room for the 49ers, but this guy basically tries to exit into his check down with his eyes closed because somebody up front, interior-wise, takes an L and is running right at the quarterback, and he just goes... I think I might get the ball in the check down. My quarterback's not going to get hit. It is terrible football. Y'all, it's terrible football. It's dangerous football. And this is how people get hurt. Okay, so the first part is the tight end up top. Not sure what that is. The running back, not sure what that is. And if they would have blocked it, it's a touchdown to the tight end. Trey Lance sees it, throws it, can't get through the throw. Can't do it by yourself. Now, from the back, you can really see the pass pro issue. So watch the left tackle. He's making a call right there, tapping his ass, what the pass pro is. Well, now he gets same call. Great. He's ready. He goes out. He's kicking out like he's going out to that edge player. Nine, slow with his feet off the drop, makes it wider, and now we're hit. Okay, now we've got the center taking an L. What is the back doing right there? <laughs> what is the back doing right there? You have to flipper him. You see that much color flash right there? You have to eat that in the face. You have to put your face in the fan, get big, and take the hit off the quarterback. Instead, boom, Jesus. Y'all, how people get hurt and miss touchdown. Damn. Next one now. Now, there's no pass pro issues here. This is as bad as it gets, in my opinion, for Trey Lance. In fact, this might be as bad as it gets for anyone playing quarterback in the league preseason wise I have no real explanation for what Trey Lance is doing here other than the fact that he just isn't seeing it well and that's me putting it as nicely as I possibly can this is Hank this is a this is obviously not my favorite play in the world okay 
They've run it earlier in the game. Sam Darnold got a nice little completion on first and forever, second and forever. But this is a sit over the ball. It's usually paired. Hank, might as well draw it. Hooks. Then something in the flat, something in the flat. You know, if he's up here, it's usually a flat. If he's from the back, it's usually a swing wide. That's that's the play. The read on this terrible play is you read however, however the sit is covered, that's where you go to the side of the hook. So if the sit is covered from this side, well, then you work this flat hook. If the sit is covered from up top, then you work this flat hook as the number two. Okay, this is one. This is two, this is two based on the coverage, the squeeze of the sit. I don't think, and I don't think I'm exaggerating here, I don't think I've ever seen it thrown this poorly where the sit is covered, the defender breaks on the ball, and he breaks so early because the throw is so bad that the throw is actually behind him, and he misses the interception because he breaks, the throw is that bad. So again, we'll talk about it from the back, but just seeing how this play is played out from the wide, y'all, this is bad football. It's never there. It's never there. It's, it's tough, man. So from the back here, we're going to have the sit come sit over the ball, and we're going to have the backer squeeze and overplay it. <laughs> so, I mean, I again, these are the ones, though, Okay, and it, it really, here's the sit. Here's the backer staring at it, right? He's staring at Trey Lance. He sees him go to throw it and breaks on the ball. He sees it so early that the ball is actually so poorly thrown, so late that he misses it. It's just really kind of, it, it's hard. It's hard. This is hard. This is hard to do. And this is the type of stuff that that I'm going to be honest here and, and say that this is the stuff that is is hard to stay in the league with stuff like this coming out. And I don't know, you know, I don't know how you how you don't see this. There's no way to sugarcoat it. That's just simply not good enough. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let it wash over you. It is a simple way to support the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for subscribing, getting the notifications. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, a great way to support the channel. You know about it. Become a member, join. I appreciate it. In addition, we have Quarterback School courses, really the premium content available through the channel. You dig the YouTube channel, you will love the courses. Enroll, links in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. All of those links can be found in the video description. Make sure to follow me across social media platforms as well. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, second and forever. This is just an iteration for me of Air Raid Y Cross down here. We're going to work the out to the number two up top. Not there. Crosser, yes. And it's wide ass open. He eventually throws it late. Again, at this point, it almost feels like he's on tilt. We should be looking to the left, nine, no, yes, back to the over. I mean, again, you can see almost like the, uh, it's almost like ghosty. Like he's he's out there seeing things that aren't there, like, Boo. <laughs> everything is just a little all over the place. Like, <laughs> late sky mail, bad. So again, I mean, I know I've drawn this play up at least three times this preseason. Everybody runs this type of play. Must outside release go. This is what I think is the front side of the concept. From there, this is where the ball should go on this crosser. It's wide ass open. And it looks like he's looking all over the place. And again, I don't know for sure that this is a read. I can just tell you, I'm not certified. But it's pretty simple. And a lot of teams run it at every level. And I'm talking Pop Warner to the league. Up top, no. Crosser, yes. And I mean, y'all. Wow. Wow. Just late, high, disgusting. It's, it's hard, man. This is hard. It's hard to watch. It's hard to break down. It's hard to make sense of. 
I will say, just because I haven't pointed it out yet, 32 in the backfield pass pro wise has been some issues. 33 right here, that's getting it done. That's outstanding. Trey Lance is not used to it. Next one here. Now this for me is when Trey Lance starts to transition into playing some better ball this game. I love the pocket movement. I love the ability to extend and create and throw a nice catchable ball. Now I know that there's a penalty. I know it's a drop. Okay, so you can't do it yourself. You certainly need some help up front. That's for sure, for sure. But this is this is good. This is nice. That's creative. That's out of structure. That's making a play. It's not there. Look at the pocket movement. Over, up, two hands on it, eyes downfield. This is supposed to be an in at the very bottom, and look how long it takes to develop. A burst in, burst little dagger, and they love a good seven stop up top. That's how, I mean, it's, that's, this is good. This is what I think they've always wanted to see. Love the pocket movement. Watch him over, up, out. Two hands on the ball the whole time. Eyes downfield the whole time. Not looking to run. Not taking off. Making a play down the field. Throwing a touch ball. Can't catch it for him. Next one here from Trey Lance. This is a very nice rep. We are hot from the field, from the slot. We throw the slant hot. We've got a free runner right in our face. We're able to put it on him, on time, decisive, where the ball should go. So we're throwing the slant to the right. We have a free runner. Look at this guy running right in our grill. Jumping right in our throwing lane. No panic. Poise. Staring down the barrel. Delivering a strike. Boom. Right up on his face. That's executing at a really, really high level. That's outstanding. So now we're starting to feel it. So again, where we are hot from is coming from what I consider a little bit of depth. Okay, again, the easiest way for me to think of this is Every five yards allows the quarterback an extra hitch. So what, he's coming from depth. So you're plus one. You're maybe plus one and a half because he's coming from width as well. So that means in your drop, instead of if this is a three-step drop from gun, you have three and whatever this is math-wise to be able to have this thing play out. So if you're going to throw this slant, you don't have to be bailing back. You know, sometimes you'll see like punt rush blitz where everybody's coming they're bringing a plus one from the line of scrimmage and you got you got guys bailing away from a free runner when people are coming from this much depth okay you have at least a plus one if not more than plus one plus one plus do that math you're welcome <laughs> regardless really nice job from trey lance it's not easy to play quarterback in the league when you're getting hit with a backup offensive line and you got free runners in your face again just check out his beat Look at the poise, the calmness of it, the rhythm of it. That's what it should look like. That's what it can look like. I think this second half is certainly better or second part of his performance this game, but it's frustrating too because he should look like this more. Next one here, touchdown, four verticals, outstanding, middle field closed, hold that free safety, snap it back, great footwork, quick reset, love it. Okay, again, just watch the helmet stripe. Looking left, holding left, boom, back fast, ball right up on his face. Y'all, that is outstanding. Really, really a nice job from Trey Lance. So again, really nice to see him be able to come into his own here after struggling early, but still being able to recognize what we got going on here. Here's the seam for the touchdown. So we're working this essentially seams, middle field closed. Okay, now it's not, sometimes it's not enough to say just, oh, it's middle field closed, go away from the safety. Sometimes, depending on how they cover the second level, can impact where you go on this play. So if they're going to carry, so if this slot defender is going to run with this seam and the slot defenders down here are not going to do that, they're going to try to pass this thing off between these two, the two and the three, well, then this makes it easy. This is wide open. So if they're going to carry a seam, let's definitely work away from the carry and it just make it that much easier and know that it's probably going to happen to the three side. Again, you can see it. Whoop. Now, maybe that's a defensive error by whoever the hell's playing over the slot down here to the bottom as well. But it's a great job taking advantage of it. Really nice job. I mean, this is decisive. Seeing the defense, reacting to the defense. It's quick. He keeps his nice base. The ball is exactly where he wants. There's a lot to like here. There's a lot to like. Certainly going in the right direction. Boom. Again, I just like the footwork we've seen the last couple of reps. It looks more poised. It looks decisive. Boom. All his cleats in the ground. Look off. Quick snap back. Not even totally lined up. Good ball. Touchdown. Now, this next one, two-pointer. Okay. 
first thing to, to recognize is there are no good play calls here. Okay, so you're going to have to make some sort of play most likely. I know I'm being picky with what I will say on this one. Okay, so I'm walking into it, acknowledging that. That being said, if he were to make a play like this, and I think it's potentially there, y'all, we would start to be able to see the Trey Lance that I think that they thought they were getting. So what is this play? First of all, this play, there is no good play. I know I've already said that. But this play looks like these guys are working into the end zone and then back. Into the end zone and then back. And then it looks like it's paired with what I'm going to call like backline wraps. So like you kind of get to the top of the logo and then work this thing across or back. This takes forever. Okay, forever, ever. ever. Now, this route up top, to me, once we it kind of times out with the scramble. So he's able to do this, stay alive, great, come out to his left. When he comes out to his left, I'm going to assume that he is looking at the number three. Because when he's he's working out to his left, if he were looking right here to the front pylon, it's going to be a play. He's got a play. But he really sees it too late. He he it looks like he's looking this way. And then by the time he gets out here further so that this is good out here, now he's late and then he does some craziness with his hips and it doesn't have a chance. Everything's just a little tardy. Everything's not clean. He's not seeing it great. So again, play it out. And I get it. This is a stretch. Okay, so go with me here. Nothing's there right now. As he comes out, if he were to throw it to the front pylon right there, but it looks like he's looking to the number three. Okay, so I acknowledge he's not looking there. But front pylon, front pylon, front pylon. Again, he's flipping his hips. You know, it's just it's all it's all out of whack. It's not smooth. I you have to throw it. I'm not mad at the decision there on the two point. I'm just saying I thought it might be there. It gets a little unfortunate with just kind of where his eyes are once he escapes. So right there, to me, his helmet stripe is looking like over the number three. The guy we can see the lower half on the by the hash, as opposed to the front pylon right now. And he's all over the place. That thing comes out. Like a TV. Damn. Last one here. 100 seconds left in the game. Down to need a field goal for the win. We're going to throw an in to the slot up top. Probably my favorite throw of the day. Got some anticipation. It's right on him. It's against a perfect look to rip this thing. I love his footwork. You know, 32 still impacting the pass pro. Just not even touching someone. Still making people take L's. Damn. Regardless. On the body, on the break, rips it in there. It allows this punt return right because of the timing of it. And now we get a chance to win this game. And we do win this game. So what am I talking about coverage-wise here? I'm talking about this little in or basic, because it's middle field closed, oftentimes the guys in the slot, because of divider rolls, will be outside. So you have this natural window to work these throws. So we get the safety in the middle of the field, and we've got outside underneath leverage. That means we can get it up and down before the middle field player, and Trey Lance does right here. Again, there's a lot to like. First, let's look when he lets it go. Top of the drop. He's throwing that thing, what, as the wide receiver's coming out of it? That's lowercase a, y'all. Hey, The base. Check out the footwork. Boom. Outstanding right there. Tight reset. Ball comes out on time. On the body, on the break, make somebody miss, accelerate away, kick a field goal for the win after a couple of victory formations. Really love it, man. This is impressive that he was able to come back. Boom. Can I just get distracted by 3 2? Regardless, nice job from Trey Lance here, ripping this one, setting up the game winning kick, battling back, you know, hopefully on the right track. So that is a wrap. Trey Lance, preseason week two. Certainly an improvement, I think it's fair to say. I think even the improvement from early on in this performance was impressive because it was not going great. It really wasn't. And some of the throws, I think, are borderline getting close to disqualifying from being able to play anytime soon, let alone for this organization. But that's just me. I think it's also important to acknowledge the fact that he got better. 
And he's not surrounded by a bunch of all pros out there in these situations. And so you got to battle through some adversity up front. You got to battle through some drops down the field. You got to battle through some mental errors all over the place. But he was able to do that and bring them back for a win. And so that part of it, you got to acknowledge as well. It can be that kind of contrasting. And it really is right now. You hope that it stays on the kind of improvement and what he was able to show on the second half of this video. But we'll see. Only time will tell. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you want to see next. I appreciate your support. I will see you next time. Have a good one.